So, let's say that the Earth is indeed flat. Gravity has a whole bunch of problems, and for one reason or another, flat earthers don't tend to believe in gravity as we know it. Instead, the most common flat earth belief is that buoyancy accounts for gravity. Buoyancy being the idea that uh, uh, things that are less dense than air will float, and things that are more dense than air will sink. Or, you know, same thing goes for water, for instance. That's why things float and sink, right? And that is the idea held by the guy that we are responding to today. But he goes a bit more in depth, or he focuses on a particular part of the buoyancy causes gravity idea, because buoyancy as gravity has a few problems in and of itself, but in order for us to go into that, I should explain exactly how buoyancy works. Our atmosphere, as well as bodies of water, have a gradient of pressure. What that means is that the lower you go in the atmosphere or in water, the higher pressure the air or water will be. So, if we have an object in the middle of air or water or a fluid, the fluid underneath it will have a higher pressure than the fluid above it. So, overall, that's going to push the object upward, because the higher pressure is going to push more than the lower pressure. Notice how this always pushes up, because that higher pressure will always push more than the lower pressure. So, you know, buoyancy force is always going to be upward, and in order for something to fall down, you need something else, a totally different downward force, something akin to gravity. So, buoyancy cannot replace gravity, because it can never pull things or push things down. But we're going to take that glaring hole in this buoyancy is gravity idea, and we're going to ignore it completely and focus on a totally different aspect of it, the idea of this pressure gradient. Because gravity is what causes this pressure gradient. See, gravity attracts mass, including air, water, any other fluid you can imagine. So in our atmosphere, even if it's like really high in the atmosphere, gravity is trying to pull it back down to Earth. So what ends up happening is that the air above is actually weighing down the air below it. Yes, they're both being pulled down, but the air on top is being pulled down on top of the air underneath it. I'm terrible at explaining things, but basically air above weighs down the air below it, and that causes this gradient of pressure. That causes air to be a higher pressure the closer to the ground you are. Generally, these things are affected with like weather and heat and whatnot, but generally that's how it is. So that's it. We need gravity for this pressure gradient in the first place. Or do we? Or is there a better explanation that also works on the flat earth? So the Earth requires no gravity, so the Earth is not necessarily a sphere. Well, that's what uh, Phuket World is here to tell us about. It's assumed that this force of gravity is required for a pressure gradient, and so it's often cited as uh, proof that we live on a globe. But is having a pressure gradient really an argument for living on a spherical Earth. Yes, it is. Gravity is indeed the only thing that can cause a pressure gradient in a still fluid. Although, we'll get more into that as he does, because I'm sure he'll explain why I'm wrong and how he, a random YouTuber, understands more about physics than physicists themselves. He also goes on to blab about things that aren't totally related. I'll cut to what's relevant. And in the natural scheme of things, without any gravity, hot and cold air circulate and they create dense and less dense air. Although hot air is less dense and cold air is more dense, yes, it's the cold air that falls down 
and the hot air rises, it's less dense. So there's only temperature and density going on. Gravity just isn't part of the equation when it comes to uh, the, the rising and falling of air due to its temperature or the pressure of the air because of the temperature. Okay, so you say gravity has no part of this, but I have to ask, why does hot air rise and cold air fall? Well, I mean, the answer is because cold air is more dense, but why does more dense air fall and less dense air rise? Why is that? This is perfectly explained by gravity, because more dense air has more mass, therefore more gravity. But on your model, there's no reason for more dense air to prefer to be closer to the ground, unless there was a pre-existing pressure gradient. How then can this be the cause of a pressure gradient if it requires a pressure gradient? So, so what causes pressure gradient? Uh, hot air rises and cold air falls. But what causes that? Well, a pressure gradient. What causes that? Hot air rises and cold air falls. What causes that? A pressure gradient. It seems like you're trying to explain why higher mass falls down by simply pointing out that higher mass falls down. What causes dense air to fall? I'm also not sure how this diagram fits into everything, because if flat earth gravity is caused by high density air falling and being closer to the ground, well, I mean, look at the right side of your own diagram. According to your explanation, gravity would be reversed here, since there is higher pressure above. Needless to say, that's not what we observe in these situations, almost as if there's another force pulling us towards Earth. And then we have the fact that uh, gases within the air... Uh, the lighter gases will rise up, such as helium. So does it not make sense scientifically that you will eventually get layers of thinner and thin thinner gases that have risen up? No, it doesn't, Nick. It doesn't make sense without gravity. It's true that less dense air rises, but why? It's true that air can circulate and move around without gravity due to differences in pressure, say, but this alone does not explain why more dense air is pulled downward towards the ground. If only there was a downward force that just pulled all mass towards the earth, that would explain all of this. He goes on to argue for the existence of a dome, a firmament, above our atmosphere because we need a solid dome in order for there to be an outer space vacuum, I guess. I don't particularly care. I'm not focusing on that here, so I'm going to skip over that bit. As we said, nature abhors a vacuum, and regardless of gravity, any, any kind of pulling or pushing force in any direction, gas gases will naturally um, dissipate within a medium. And again, of course, we're talking about different mediums that are liquidy, gassy. They're very similar, just depends on temperature. They're called fluids, by the way, and the difference between a liquid and a gas is that a liquid will have a definite, unchanging volume. But notice what he said here. Without a downward force, gases will dissipate. I assume he means that gases will naturally form an equilibrium where no area has a higher or lower pressure than another. And that would be correct. But that flies in the face of everything you're trying to say right now. Remind me again how a difference in pressure is what causes buoyancy, which is what causes gravity. How is a pressure gradient formed in a system which naturally forms an equilibrium. Hmm. If only there was a downward force that just attracted all mass. That would explain everything. Absolutely everything. But that would be crazy, because that would mean that there isn't a huge conspiracy to deceive the masses. And again, he continues to blab on about things that aren't totally completely related, so I'll skip to what's relevant yet again. 
This means that whatever or wherever the sun is, it may be possible that it simply just gets colder as you rise in altitude. It's a bit tough to tell what he's trying to say here since flat earthers don't typically speak in a coherent train of thought, but he's talking about how sunlight hits the ground and heats up the ground and air around it. And I don't exactly know why he's pointing this out because this would cause a high temperature, low pressure zone below a low temperature, high pressure zone but this would cause the pressure gradient to reverse. And in this scenario, a less dense helium balloon would sink. And since that's all that causes gravity in the first place, then your flat earth gravity would be entirely reversed and people would be floating in the air. So if you have uh, the light gases, the less dense gases naturally rising in layers, then, for example, helium, then you would eventually get, maybe if it gets cold enough, you would get liquid helium. And then if it gets even colder, you get uh, ice, helium ice. So let me, let, me, let me get this straight. The sun heats up the air near the earth, close to the ground, and that causes cold air to float because it's less dense heat causes air to be less dense so wouldn't this cause the colder more dense air to rush into it because the differences in pressure and weren't you just talking about how air will dissipate which I assume means to form an equilibrium. There's there's no reason for this to separate. What? I, I, I guess I think I see what he's saying here, that the sun heats up the air towards the ground, so then, you know, the hot air is lower, close to the ground, and then colder air is higher up because of that. But, I mean, that, that doesn't make sense, because, like I said, cold air would rush into the hot air and air will naturally form an equilibrium so it's it's so difficult to follow this train of thought and i might actually be hurting myself by trying but the the heat from the sun would not completely polarize the atmosphere it doesn't it doesn't work that way as you may or may not be trying to say and he continues to blab on about things that don't seem to be related, and I have yet to find anything that goes back to this same topic, so for the sake of my sanity, I'm going to end the video here. I hope you enjoyed, I hope it was insightful, and even if you completely disagreed with all of my arguments here, there's the fact that the buoyancy force will only push things up in one direction, so buoyancy cannot replace gravity. So, I mean, I essentially didn't have to make this video in the first place, but I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm doing or why, but it was interesting and very entertaining to watch. That's why you're subscribed. That's why you like all my videos. That's why you donate to the Patreon. And buy my merchandise. I still have that. I totally forgot that that's something I have. Anyhow, goodbye.